Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world, it's the Joe Cortez Show. Hello and welcome to the Joe Cortez Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. When I say entertainment, I mean we really got have some entertainment for you today. We have a gentleman by the name of Spudini. Spudini is a young man, an ex-Marine, served as well. Thank uh, Spudini for serving. And, uh, of course, we have our uh, co uh, host, uh, Dylan, who's going to be also sharing on the show with us. Uh, I can say that Spudini is an individual that I look up to not only as a young man with a lot of talent from New York, originally from Dominican Republic, and when now uh, was a race and, uh, and learned all his tricks back in the days when he was an eight-year-old. And he's here with us. Thank you so much, Dini, yeah, for being you. on the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, and Dylan, and Dylan here on the show with us. Gangsta. Okay, Smoothini, now tell me a little bit about yourself. We know that you're a New Yorker. Mm -hmm. Actually, you came to New York when you were three years of age. Yes, sir. And shortly thereafter, you got into the magic. Yes. Who inspired you to get into the magic? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, Ooh. my dear friend, who I was with uh, last week. I always say that the inspiration as uh, let me see if they can see the New York cat over here. There we go. Got to represent. Washington, that's not, no, this is Wu-Tang right here. Oh, New York, I love my city. <laughs> but no, what happened was about eight years old, Eddie Murphy Raw came out. Okay. And um, I saw this man in that tight red leather outfit. Right. And I said I wanted to be him, commanding a stage. Oh, yeah. And um, I remember like going to school and telling my teacher that I don't need to learn math because I'm going to be a comedian. <laughs> and that there's no need for, for math. And then, um, so she, go, she goes, you know, hey, if you want to be a comedian, next Wednesday, go in front of the class. You get 10 minutes. Okay, find out that I'm not funny. So I started doing <laughs> magic almost immediately. <laughs> and, um, and my mom was like, you really want to be a magician? And she decked me out. And I used to go to the library, read up my books, taught myself. And little by little, just got really good at it. Well, I'll tell you, you're, you're amazing. I mean, you won the season of 2014, America's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, do, you did pretty good for yourself there. Um, so they say, I mean, my video <laughs> is still one of the most watched audition videos of all time. Something yeah. like 180 million combined views. 180 million. Something like that if you combine them all. And that's not even world star hip hop, that's just YouTube. And that led to my TV show, which was even more awesome. But... I remember that one day, that one performance, where it was like night and day. Like, that's when it changed. And Howie Mandel asked me uh, on that stage, he, go, he goes, so how's it going for you? How's the magic going for you? And I just smiled, and my mind went blank, and what came out of my mouth was part of the truest statement I ever said. Oh, what did you say? I said it'd be better in five minutes. Ooh, wow. <laughs> nice. And I went there, and I blacked out. And I did what I do every night in Vegas. I just do my regular magic in front of their faces. And by the time I got back up on stage, I'm here in the standing ovation. And I realized, boom, that's it. I'm ready to go. Wow. I wonder how many people actually have that same type of experience, you know, where they're on the stage and they feel like they black out and then they see that standing ovation. Over the years, I've been able to talk to other contestants. Right. You know, um, I've gotten phone calls from like literally almost every magician okay. that's been on that show after my season. Okay. Just advice, you know, how was it or whatever. And then I do like an after action report for a lot of them and ask them, you know, nice. how was it? And for the ones that do really well, they right. almost always tell me that they just went boom in their zone. Now you were in the, in the U.S. Marines uh -huh. and you serve again. To that. Thank you for serving. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, I did it for college though, so I'm not like a big patriot. <laughs> okay, but when you were, when you were the Marine, were you performing there? Were you able to perform? Uh -huh. you, kept, you kept the troops uh, uh, entertained? entertained? <laughs> yeah. How I, was, that? I, How went, was that? I went into the Marine Corps specifically to get out to do magic. Okay. Oh, so my plan okay. was to be a professional magician, but I was I was in the hood, and it was right after 9/11, and I couldn't get a job, and I'm 21 years old, and I'm living with my parents, and I can't find a way to get out of the cycle, and it's I'm living in a hip hop culture where magicians are not known. Right. So it's not like I'm gonna find an events an investor to just give me 10, 20 grand to like, be a sure. magician. I don't have a rich family, and so I knew if I went to the Marine Corps, I would get self discipline, and um, meet connections, and travel the world. And um, I remember one day in boot camp, my recruiter called my drill instructor. And like halfway through boot camp, all of a sudden, that drill instructor comes out and goes, who's recruit magic? <laughs> That'd be you. So I'm like, ah, oh, great. They freaking told him. <laughs> and before I knew it, I'd be doing tricks in, in the middle of the field. Aww. And 
every deployment when I went to um, Kuwait, on the boat, on the Navy boat, oh my God, we were there for like six months, floating in the middle of the Pacific. And every Tuesday, I'm practicing tricks to all the sailors and the Marines. But look at that inspiration that you were able to give. You know, I mean, you inspired them, you kept everybody motivated. I wouldn't and say I, inspire them, but it was well, kind of cool. I bet, I bet someone like you was inspiring all the time. Yeah, well, he came out of the hood to do good. Uh, right? You know, so, uh, I mean, the guys are, uh, you know, you're really an inspiration. You got a lot of young folks out there watching, been watching you for a number of years, watching you on TV, especially on the YouTube channel. If you want to watch Spudini uh, perform his acts, you see him on America's Got Talent. Put him his name out there, and you'll see all the magic that he does. He's an amazing young man. So we have to get him on the show. My friend uh, John was my co-host on the Favor Firm show. He said, Joe, uh, Smudini comes to our place, our restaurant, a bar that we have in Vegas. And being that Smudini lives here in Vegas in Summerlin and has two beautiful uh, kids, uh, twins. I actually got four kids. And you got four? Yeah, I procreate a lot. Okay. <laughs> well, I think, I think, I think, the last two of the twins. <laughs> the, the twins. He said, I believe he told his wife, I'm losing magic. You got one, boom, boom. we'll make it two. And all of a sudden, now you got twins. Yeah. <laughs> now, twins running your side of the family? Or, uh, or, both. Or both sides. I, how, how I did not do that 23 and me when I first met her, I have no idea. My father's a twin. She got twins in her family. But oh. hey, just a lot of love. And, and you know what? And uh, you and I can look like twins pretty soon. Yeah, actually, you know, I it, lost his hair in the Marine Corps. Oh, yeah. it, it, it look like twins right, right here. Yeah. They're, they're twins right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the little bit of gray you say comes from it's just the children. Just children. <laughs> <laughs> Stress me out. My, my social media is usually like a long list of how crazy they drive me because I stay at home during the daytime with the twins. Mm. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and trust me, it's like daddy daycare is insane. But... <laughs> They're going to go to kindergarten this year, so. They're adorable. Yeah. They yeah. really yeah, are they're cute. Adorable. I have a question about when you were a child, mm -hmm. you used to sneak out of the house. Mm -hmm. Tell us where you went. Okay, so a little bit of a background story, folks. Because <laughs> this, this is something that I do not need my stepdaughter to hear about. Okay. <laughs> She's not watching. <laughs> but um, my father grew, raised me watching a lot of TV, right? And he watched Cheers. Oh. And it was just something about Cheers that made me love the idea of bars. Right. It just yeah. felt like a cool place to hang out, like a big clubhouse. So, yeah, I would sneak out of my house in Washington Heights and sneak out to this bar called Coogan's. And, you know, early 90s, it wasn't that bad as, you know, today where people carted you. So I can just sneak into the <laughs> background and the drunk guys would be, wouldn't care and I'm there doing tricks and hustling for money. And look at your size and just go, they knew, oh, they knew exactly what I was. I mean, it was the same time frame that um, I would, my father would send me at the age of 10 to buy him a pack of cigarettes. And mm. it wasn't like, it wasn't like sure, today. Sure. And, but yeah, and to this day, you know, Coogan's is a big supporter of mine. And they got my picture on the side of the wall. I always ask people to go there and, but, but isn't that the picture where they have all the other, uh, uh, other no, no, notable people from the yeah, neighborhood yeah. And, and politicians? Mm -hmm. uh, they had Giuliani, they had Cuomo. I mean Cuomo. Hillary Clinton, Bill. I mean, and then there's my dumb ass in one corner. Your, your hey, I like that you're up there. You're I a love star. it too because it was a goal of mine. Yes, I, I enjoy that accomplishment more than almost any other accomplishment. But let me ask you a question. Now you see all the pictures, of all these. Uh, Politicians, but you mentioned those names. Have you ever thought of becoming a politician yourself? It's crossed my brain. It's crossed your brain? <laughs> I talk a lot of nonsense, so yeah, it's pretty good. But you may, you can a be... politician and a magician is the same thing. Yeah, you lie for a living. You <laughs> <laughs> lie for a living. Okay. Well, it's you know what? Robbing. <laughs> I mean, it's like legally robbing people without a gun, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Politics for now, I'm way too sober. No, no, no. We, we, we don't no, talk no. politics on no, this show here, today. man. <laughs> we, could, we could talk about boxing. But you say you don't like I boxing. I don't know anything about boxing. No? I'm, you, I'm not a sports guy. No, you know how to box oranges? You know, put them in a box? Make them disappear. I probably, I probably, <laughs> <laughs> I what do you think? Okay. I always joke that, you know, I'm not a white magician. I don't put the things in boxes and make them disappear. And you could stand 400 feet away. I'm from the hood, so we got to oh, do it. Oh, thank goodness. So I'm safe. Uh, okay. I'm yes, safe yes. being here? Okay, You're good. safe. I'm not so on you in half. But show me something of one of your tricks. Come on, you got yeah, something got something right here. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 hey, oh, man. My bad, man. Clear, oh. You got tissue. Clean that up with a tissue, man. <laughs> well, we'll see how this is going to look. Um, so people at home, if you see my eyes going down, it's because there's a little monitor right here, and I'm legally blind, kind of. But look up there, then. Don't look down. Well, I'm going to have to see where I'm going. Okay. Oh, I see. And, and I want to see if you guys can see this. So I'm sure they can. Okay. So we'll, we'll figure it out, okay? That's it's it. every ace by touch. 
that's for you guys to see. Whoa. The, oh, he Whoa. had to do that on purpose. It's a beautiful sign. Look, make sure the cards are different. They are. Yeah. Right? I'm going to do my best right. to find every ace by touch. Okay. Beginning with the ace of clubs. I love magic, so this is exciting. Oh, magic's going to love you right back today. Okay. And the ace of clubs is not this card or, say, that card Ooh. right over here. It is not this card and definitely, say, not that card right over there. Wow. But the, they've all been. They're all there somewhere. The ace of clubs is a little bit more like this. <gasps> it the is? The red aces. I'm not sure if you guys at home can see it, but you got to trust them that We'll it is. hold them up at the end. Can we do that? Yes, we Ooh. can definitely do that. Let me just find them first. Okay. And, of course, the ace of spades. Wow. Hey, uh, okay. All right, wait for it. Wait for wait it. For it. Yeah. Okay. Wait for it. We got to do the shimmy. Right. Wow, I got it. Out of your beautiful hair. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> see. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. So guy in a real job. I'll tell you. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Let's do a real more complicated trick. Something that's a little bit more beautiful and a little bit more intricate. Now I do way more than card tricks. I woke up this morning and I. My, one of my kids is six, so I was like, ah, what can I do? I don't even know what the studio's going to be like. So i got to be careful with my angles. So we're going to do a trick that I, I personally love, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it too. So I'm going to want you, because you're a magic lover. I am. To pick out any card you want. Any card. Any card. Just any card. Any card. This is the reason why I lost America's Got Talent. Nobody wants to listen to my freaking instructions <laughs> over here. All right? Yeah, I want you to just say stop whenever you okay. please. Stop. I'm going to close my eyes. You take a look at that card. Do not show it to me. Show it to the camera. Do? That way, okay. Yeah, yeah. That way everybody knows it's the six of hearts. <laughs> it is. Okay, I just wanted to save some time. All right? Wow. Let me get your autograph all oh, over that please. six. Resist the urge of giving me your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> that line has never worked. There we go. Ooh. Ah, all right. Let's see how this rolls. You do realize it's been up my nose, all right? I do. Okay. <laughs> I thought about that when I had to sign. There we go. Ooh, like that angle. Okay, now this is bad there. I've got the shade in my face. We don't yes. do that. For all you kids who want to be professionals, this is not a good look. Mm. You know, you got to make sure they see the, few, the future right there. But today, right now, I'm just going to go like this. Six of hearts, put it in about the middle, go from the middle to the top. Oh, nice. Do it again, six of okay. hearts, put it in about the middle, shove it in, goes right to the Ooh. top. I want wow. you to hold that. Place it over here. Okay. We're going to go shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. It's a Marine Corps shuffle that makes a card Ooh. look like it vanishes from the entire deck, disappears. Hey, wow. It appears right there. We won't do that again for you guys. So we place it over here, put it right here. Okay. Bam! Did you see it go? <laughs> I didn't do it yet. All I did was to say bam really loud, scare y'all. Right? Actually, it's when you laugh, that's when it goes into my pocket, right about here. Wow. Oh, there he is. Now, some people think that what I do is that I keep the card hidden in my hand. You see? They think I do that. And then I use that as a way to touch people in Vegas, uh, which is legal, but weird, right? The harder way, let me see your palm. If I take this six with your name on it and just dematerialize the atomical structure of that card to the point it's completely gone from the entire deck, disappears and reappears. In his pocket. My pocket. It's in his pocket. Go inside. Oh, my God. I'm touching you. There it is. Hey, wow. Hey. Whoa, that's a magic. Last but not least, both your hands. Ooh, good job. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, perfect, perfect. Six of hearts, your name on it. Put your other hand right on top of that for me. Six of hearts right there. He was the king of spades. We're going to go one, two, three. Bop. Whoa. That, that, what's in your hands? The king of spades. Whoa. That's all right. I felt nothing. That's not what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got funnier through the years. <laughs> you can still be a comedian, man. Oh, 
I know. I, now I built myself as a comedian magician. But I told you the first couple of years of my insecurity as a teenager, I, I would hide behind the magic. And then as I started getting like complimented for my my trickery, my 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 confidence rose. And now I, I could be. I can actually do a full stand up show, which I will one day. Um, well, you know what? I think I want to be a magician myself sometimes. You know, I mean, you kind of know me as a boxing referee, but you know what? I'm gonna come up with something here, guys. <laughs> you see this here? Now this is uh, Ace of Clubs, right? There you go, Ace of Clubs. Now Ace of Clubs. Here we go. And back to Ace of Clubs, right? Is it okay? That's called job security for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good about myself even more, man. <laughs> we can't have we can't have beautifully complex bald people doing magic these days. Ooh, you know, what? <laughs> you, know you, you, you put the two heads together. You know what that looks like, right? I look like butt, man. You look like butt. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! I'll tell you, you know, it really is. Uh, they're talking about, uh, about butts, uh, but uh, what are you gonna be doing in life besides uh, your magic? What you have any groups you're involved with? Any uh, charity groups or anything? Uh, yeah, some veteran groups. Veteran okay. groups. Um, you know, my my wife she's a mental health therapist okay. counselor. And Does she help you out a little bit once in a while? I'm still alive, man. <laughs> 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 hey, man. You got the streets going pretty good. Yeah. But no, um, so I have I've, um, the suicide rate within the active and, yes. and the yes. veteran military community is yes. something that really saddens me. And it happened to me when I was active duty. Not well, not to me, but yeah. like people in my unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've, I've tried, you know, I, I love to make people smile. And it's sometimes kind of cool to, to, to meet some vets and play with them. And it's not just vets. I think anybody that needs a exactly. little bit of love. Exactly. But I don't really like to focus too much on my charity stuff because it makes me feel so good. I don't want to be a person like throwing, throwing it out there in the world that I'm doing that because right. it seems kind of like if you don't do it, do it from the heart. Do right. it, don't do it for publicity. Don't, you know, don't do it. I think it cheapens it. Right. Um, yeah. But besides that, um, just trying to keep working. Yeah, but I, I, I think that people out there watching me, special groups or charity groups that are doing events want to have somebody like Budini on their events to, to perform. That's a way to keep, keep at least you're involved with them in an indirect way because you're, you're giving back to them. Well, we'll see. You're, we'll you're see. I, think I sometimes feel like I'm the charity. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't give out. I'm, I'm over here like, help oh, me, please. <laughs> but, but we, we saw you with those two people with your twins outside. The twins are outside, by the way, in the, in the, in the green room. And uh, I can tell you that the, the two beautiful little boy and little girl, they're three years old. Man, you know, those, those mixed genes, man. My, my wife is from a Polish background, from Chicago. Ah. So married to a white girl, my Dominican. Put the mechs together and they come out pretty and it's yeah. like messed up, yo. Yeah. I worked hard to be charming. And these <laughs> freaking little kids just came out beautiful. They did, they, they are too beautiful. <laughs> Maybe they take after their mama? No. They <laughs> definitely do. That uh, is a no, no, no. They, they're beautiful. But I think they, they you are. Just, it, it's, You're it, beautiful too, then. It, it's, 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 it's a blessing. Uh, you, you produce some magic on him. Just, I did. You make, look how beautiful he looks. <laughs> I'm gorgeous these days. I did. But, but I'll tell you what, they did. We, we love having people like you on the show because this is what people want to see. Something different. They don't want to see all this political stuff, all this war going out there with political parties. We're not about that. We're about giving you entertainment, Fun. giving you love, and sharing all that love and attention mm -hmm. that's needed around the, these difficult times these days. Oh, you know, now, now you, I you, got no opinion on that one either. Okay, now you have your, you're talking about doing a show. You want to do a show? Anything in mind with your? Yeah, well, I so I, I used to go by the name Smoothini the Ghetto Houdini, and then um, Fuse Network um, gave me a TV show called Hip Hop Houdini. And I didn't even, and we were working really hard. I mean, I hooked up with Wiz Khalifa, the rapper, and we went network to network to network to pitch it. And the concept is very simple. I meet a hip hop celebrity, and I get to know that person okay. through magic throughout the whole episode. And at the very end of the episode, I do one specific big trick that is only unique to that person, that individual. Right. And it was, as we were trying to pitch it, I didn't even, I thought the name of the show was gonna be Smoothini. Okay. Right, the whole time, a year and a half, two years, like during the time after America's Got Talent. And then one day in Miami, here's the vice president of the network, you know, and he's the host of Hip Hop Houdini. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Hip Hop Houdini? And then so I go in front of the mirror and I'm trying to practice my name. Hi, I'm Smoothini, the Ghetto Houdini, host of the show Hip Hop Houdini. And I'm like, oh no. Oh, I gotta drop the, hip I gotta drop the Ghetto the Houdini. Ghetto. But mind you, 
during the time frame, I've become married, I have kids, I live in the suburbs, so I think it was about time. And my show was raunchier. I used to go down women's shirts and pull out dildos, you know, like that was Ooh. part of my stage show. <laughs> like it was disgusting, but it worked. It worked in Vegas 10 years ago. Right. But as the Me Too City. Yeah. yeah, but as the Me Too movement and everything came out and I'm seeing my daughter get uh, grow up, Growing up, I'm realizing that this, this that level of raunchiness didn't right. fit me anymore. So I dropped the Ghetto Houdini. And so I still am doing a tour uh, nationwide called the Death of the Ghetto Houdini Tour because ah. my, my America's Got Talent video keeps getting reviled every few months and people keep calling me Ghetto Houdini. And I'm like, well, it's been two years, guys. I'm, I gotta let the people know that this is the last time they can see me acting all crazy. That's good though, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a way to like put it to rest. Yeah, and evolve. And evolve, mm -hmm. exactly. There's a lot of people, a lot of younger people that really miss that. But it's like even some of these jokes, I've, I'm, I'm not the same 28 year old that moved to Vegas. As no. a 38 year old, I'm like, that's kind of nasty. And some of those videos are still on YouTube and I still flinch. Like, I right. don't believe I said that. That's so disrespectful. But at the time it was funny, at the time that was me. And so just kind of doing that. And the dates and all that stuff will be on the internet, so. That's yeah. great. I'll be doing a couple of last shows here in Vegas, but I don't got the venues yet. Maybe me, you, we can hook up and we can. Yeah. We, 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 we better. We, we definitely will start making some phone calls, that's for sure. I mean, I'm inspired by you. You're a young man. Come, we're from the hood. We come from the, I'm, I'm from Spanish all of myself, and you're from the uh, Washington Heights. Up in the 170 some odd streets, 175th? 174. Yeah, 174, uh -huh. okay. And I used, to, I used to live 140 years between Broadway and Hamilton Place. Uh, and I, but I, I was born and raised in Spanish Harlem, so I know a little bit about uh, what you've gone through. I'm a veteran myself. I went in the Army when I was 18. Cool. After I turned pro as a fighter, I went into the Army. And, uh, and here, we, here we are now. Here in Las Vegas, uh, Sin City, we don't call it Sin City anymore because this city is one of the most uh, wonderful cities we want to live in on this planet. The entertainment capital of the world, the sports capital of the world. Now we got all these boxing, football, basketball, football. hockey, uh, football. My baby. marriage. Yeah, his marriage. His fights. <laughs> that, 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 fights all the time. You, you guys need a referee when those fights break out? <laughs> call me up. You know, but I get paid to referee those fights. I don't get. I, I don't referee anymore without getting paid. You know, but I, I'm sure we can keep those marriages together or the relationships together, and if not, if it doesn't work out, you know, toss him out the window, next, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm moving from Vegas. Where are you going to? Where are you going to? Yeah, we, uh, we're, we're looking at South Florida. South really? Florida? It won't be any time soon, I think by the time the twins are in second grade. Oh. It's a change of pace. I want some grass. I miss trees. Oh. You know, but uh, I love to Henderson. It. They have grass in Henderson. I don't like that grass. Oh. What, 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 kind of, what kind of grass are you talking about? The, well, <laughs> all kinds of grass. I, I suffer from glaucoma. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, oh. I think it's attacking me right now, but <laughs> what, 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 I, I can't be high with the twins. They mess up my high. Yeah. So you're talking about the grass that you walk on? Yes. Get your feet in. I want trees. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the thing is like this, the moment that we decided that we we're going to ultimately move to to move out, yeah. because I have family in, you know, in Florida. She has family in Florida. Oh, well that I, I don't have like besides her I you know the support network and just a change of pace. But the moment that we decided that, oh my God, let's go move to Southern Florida, South Florida, right. I started missing Vegas immediately. Where about oh, Florida? I love this place. Where about Florida? I don't want to tell people that. Okay, but well, anyway, I got a nephew, Jonathan. Here in Miami. I got a, I got a, a nephew, Jonathan Cortez in Sarasota, and he re, he's a great performer. He's an impersonator when it comes to singing. Uh -huh. He sings like over 100 different uh, singers out there. Jonathan Cortez, call him the jack of all trades. I'm going to hook you up with him if you move to Florida, because this guy can really use you on his show, that's for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. there you go. Maybe I want to start doing the cruise ships, you know? Oh, cruise ships oh, yeah. are good. Yeah, yeah, different market. But I really want to stay filming TV. That's where I really want to stay filming at. Filming TV. Filming TV, I love it. Man. It's not because of camera tricks, because sometimes getting, it's like a triple kind of magic you're doing. I'm doing it to the uh, the entertainer here. Sure. Right? So that trick got to work this way. Right. Then the trick got to work for the camera. Right. Then, just like today. Just like today. Yes. And then the third one is, it has to relate to the audience at home yes. that that person's not in on it. Yeah. Well, that was like yeah. today. Well, so, you know, like when I get no, like a, when I get like a celebrity, when I get the like when I get a celebrity like Little John, okay. they know that I didn't pay that person off. Right, right. And when I do some of my YouTube videos, they don't know who these people are. They're just drunk in Vegas, and they like, and you see the comments like, ah, they're in on it, they're in on it. So that that kind of level of logistics and stuff that's just fascinating. Excuse me, it fascinates me. 
Well, I can tell you one thing. What you did today was not fixed. Was not set up. Oh we gosh, just, no. I didn't even know what, what kind of trick. I knew you. I told you do some kind of trick today to for our audience out there. But I didn't know what you had in mind. Oh, he has another. But he re- he, got oh, another one. Here's another okay. one. All right. Is it going to go in your nose too? Yes. It okay. is. No, 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 no. I <laughs> see. I didn't. I didn't wear my wedding ring. That's a normal thing because my fingers are very delicate instruments. All right. Can I see your ring? Ooh wee. Now let's just hope the people at home can see this. She's going to be tough, or just trust me. There is it. There we go. There is a ring. The one that masks them all. Put the string through the ring. Okay. Don't put that through your nose. That's not going to happen. Hold that right there. (laughs) And we're going to go one, two, (gasps) three. Take the ring. Whoa. Put the string. To the ring. There we go. Look at that. Look at that for framing. All right? <laughs> it doesn't work for me. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a Jedi thing. It is a complete Jedi and thing. I tried and everything. <laughs> you know, it's okay. All right. Ooh. We can get it right there. One, two, three. Whoa. Wow. I, want you to pull, I can promise you, this is all happening. Pull the ring. Okay, pull the ring. Mm-hmm. Like this. It's on there. Okay. Oh yeah, it's on there. Let go. Okay. Hold that with your right hand. I want you to come and hold this with your left hand. Okay. The left hand. Mm-hmm. And then both of you hold each end of the marker, and don't pull it. Just hold it. <laughs> We're gonna go one, two, three. Whoa! Wow! Now that yeah, you can is keep amazing. the ring. That's for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I like, I like to give gifts. Wow, that's, that's not amazing. a problem. That's amazing. I tell you, that that really great. Good stuff. So I and do want to. my ring. <laughs> it is. It still is. So I want to say to the folks at home that if you have Amazon Prime, Hulu. Um, Sling or Tubi, or if you have Fuse on demand, the show's called Hip Hop Houdini. Uh, we have Fat Joe, Little John, Iggy Azalea, Waka Flocka, Becky G, and I'm missing somebody and they're going to hate me. Joe Cortez. <laughs> you are not <laughs> in the show. I didn't, I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, come on, make it. He make knew it ma- was magic. magic so it's going to be mad. I'm missing somebody <laughs> completely. Dylan, okay. Make it Dylan magic. So Hip Hop Houdini, it's me, and, I'm, I, and I do a lot of crazier stuff. So <laughs> thank I mean, you. I mean, this guy's amazing. I mean, talking about the, your, your travel, your, your dream, your, what do you see in the future, like in the, in the, in the horizon for you? Okay. On, on the horizon. Well, I, I, you know, I do this in several languages. I speak, oh. sp- I'm Dominican, so I speak Spanish, Spanish fluently, and I speak Japanese fluently. Japanese? Okay. Yeah, I, you know, stationed in Japan. And well, the president should have had you over there with him yesterday. Cut uh, a, he, he does not need me anywhere near him. He, uh, he <laughs> cut, cut a deal with him. With okay, the, let's, <laughs> let's hear about his <laughs> languages that he yeah, speaks. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I can do un peu with the français, and, and it's just like, but I would like to be able to... Vous Oui, oui, Jerry. So what I want to be able to do is really take it and do like an international comedy show where the, the audience could be as diverse as possible and yet everybody's getting it. And to make people come together through the art of magic, that'd be kind of cool. I like um, that. I want to do a, um, a real big Comedy Central type of special in which I do bigger tricks, yes. but I also drive home a beautiful message of unity. You know what I mean? Oh. With magic. You know, I'm just That's I'm like nice. a hippie. Yeah. You know, I'm just a hippie. Besides that, I would like to have a residency. I would like to, um, you know, change my tax bracket. <laughs> so, so, retire we, my mom. <laughs> so if you had a residency, you, you would stay maybe a little longer. Oh yeah, okay. like to get, if one of these casinos were to knock on my door, okay, which they haven't. They know I've been here for ten freaking years. <laughs> okay, well we need to we need to help you with that. You. I'm not mad at you, Caesars. <laughs> we we, 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 we got to make some phone calls. There. <laughs> I can do anything anybody else on that strip can do, if not better, and I'm cuter and funnier. Okay, well you I'm going to give you that. <laughs> I, I don't talk to guys. Now, I, I I'm gonna tell you though, I do have a lot of love for a lot of the headliners in here in, in Vegas, and they all deserve what absolutely what they do. Yes. Like who? Uh, you know the guy who I lost to in America's Got Talent, Matt Franco. I mean, I think he's a top-notch magician, an amazing person with a you know piff as well. Murray Sawchuck was well, one of the people that gave me the most advice when I first moved to uh, Vegas. Nathan Burton gave me a little bit of a job and let me, let me perform on stage in the Flamingo within three months of me moving to Vegas. Oh, wonderful. Um, and I just keep on going and going and going. So it's not like it's an, any kind of rivalry. I just want to get my space. Right. And be like, I'm here. <laughs> well, I, I really think you can make a lot of good things happen. And you're a, a very talented young man, a great father. And, 
and you have uh, so much talent. I mean, this, you're the kind of talent we need here in Las Vegas. We talk about the entertainment capital of the world. I mean, any hotel here on the Strip should have somebody like yourself with your talent. And you can, you can uh, talk to him. I'm not his agent, but I can talk to him like a brother. Mm -hmm. I want to help him out with on the hood, you know? Uh, you got the same haircut. Yeah, we got, yeah. the same, we got we go to the same barber, let's put <laughs> yeah, it that right. way. I want to be with a Ford daycare. Just <laughs> 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 the simple things in life right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you become a parent, your lifestyle does change. Everything oh, yeah. changes, that's for sure. Hey, and that's the thing, that I think the best thing is, you know, I believe in a higher power and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, my one audition in America's Got Talent, I had to focus on being a dad because we had lack of help. Uh -huh. But every six months that video gets reviled and now that the twins can go to a school, I'm still here. Right. We're well, running out of time. Yeah, well, that's what I want to say that uh, having Smoothini here on the show today with Delin, uh, it's like a, a, a magical day because it's a wonderful experience Absolutely. having somebody like Smoothini on the show. And we hope that you uh, viewers out there can get to watch him on the YouTube channels and, and follow him because he's definitely going places. You can say you saw him here on the Joe Cortez show in Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. And my buddy, you're my undisputed champ, yes. Smoothini, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Take care. we catch you next week. God bless. <laughs>